Well, Rich Green, St. Stephen family and guests, welcome to another edition of Living Water for a Thirsty Thursday. Yeah, we've been talking about casual Christian conversations. Just want to start off and say, you know, thank you for tuning in and uh, commenting, subscribing, sharing, all those different things, you know, that people do on social media. Really grateful that uh, you take time to uh, listen to these and, uh, you know, prayerfully apply and, and use in whatever form God allows you. So thank you for your faithfulness with that. Haven't said that in a long time. And, I want you to know how much it is appreciated that you uh, take this time out to uh, take in this information. But with that being said, uh, I want to kind of close out the casual Christian conversation conversation. And with that, uh, today, I want to look at it from a, a, a perspective of, you know, have you ever had to have a casual Christian conversation when there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of confusion and just flat out craziness? Yeah, so today we're talking about casual Christian conversations in the midst of craziness, confusion, and just chaos. How do you do that? How do you talk with people that are frustrated and angry and upset? Uh, and you're trying to have a casual Christian conversation when they're hung up on the abortion issues or immigration issues or sexism issues or racism issues or uh, things going on with the mass shootings that are happening all around us or homelessness that we can't seem to resolve, mental health crisis that's all around us, social injustices that we continue to fight through. And we say, but let's have a casual Christian conversation in the midst of the chaos, the confusion, the calamity, the issues. Yeah, that's not easy to do. And so in us just kind of talking through this uh, today, uh, what kind of hit me? I showed you a book a couple weeks ago and it was called Contagious. And it just hit me as I was reading it um, that when you think back to the pandemic and during that pandemic, you know, we were doing all that we could all over the world to make sure that we didn't pass the virus if we had it to someone else. Uh, we didn't want to be contagious. We were wearing masks and cleaning things and social distancing, which I think they should have called physical distancing, just, you know, but nonetheless, that's neither here nor there, but having space from one another, all of these things to make sure that we didn't pass on this said virus. Well, I started thinking about that with being contagious Christians. And I wondered, man, is it that people in our society, because of abortion issues, immigration issues, and because of sexism, racism, and mass shootings, and homelessness, and uh, just the mental health issues, and social injustices, is that what is causing people to look at Christianity and they put on a mask, they keep their social distance, their physical distance. They don't want to hear what we have to say uh, because they don't want to be infected by what we have uh, because they're so upset or uh, just so disenchanted with life. I'm like, OK, yeah, that could be true. No question about it. And that's why it's hard for us to even give a casual Christian conversation. And then another side of the coin presented itself and it was simply, well, or is it that Christians really aren't? infected with Christianity. And is that a paradox or what? Christians aren't really infected with Christianity. I pray that is not the case, but I wonder if it isn't the people aren't willing to hear our casual Christian conversations, but uh, it's the way we talk. It's the way we confront. It's the way we come across maybe being judgmental or critical. It sounds more like our opinion rather than God's word or God's opinion. I think that is partly the case, too. And so it's probably some hybrid, if you would, of people that really are trying to physical and socially distance from having casual Christian conversation or hearing from Christians. And then also probably a lot of us Christians are guilty of not really having uh, the patience, the love, the tolerance, uh, the forgiveness uh, the capacity to see people as God sees people, which is important. Uh, casual Christian conversations, they need to happen, but we, when we're around people, especially that may know us or we spend a little bit more time with them, they're also kind of fruit inspecting, if you will. Fruit inspecting in 
see it how we act and how we treat people. Uh, Jesus is a good example of that. And I, you know, I just want to, I won't read a bunch of verses, but I, you've, you've heard of this before. And this is in Matthew 25. And Jesus says in the 42nd verse, he says, For I was hungry and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. I was naked and you did not give me clothes. I was sick and in prison and you visited me not. Well, this is, you probably heard the term uh, felt needs. And felt needs, a lot of times, needs to be addressed quicker than a spiritual need or even some other type of need that we're trying to move towards, like salvation, right? If I'm hungry, it's hard to hear about the grace and the mercy of God. I'm trying to figure out why God would allow me to be hungry, right? So if you give me some food, then maybe I can hear. If I'm freezing here because I have no clothes to wear, and if you give me some clothes, Maybe I can warm up and I can start to think and process uh, through what you are trying to share with me in this casual Christian conversation. But if a Christian uh, looks at someone that's homeless, if a Christian looks at a person that is having an abortion, if a Christian looks at a person that they feel shouldn't be here because of some immigration laws or rules and they have some judgment in their mind or there's some social or sexist or racial issue or overtones that are still embedded in their Christianity, uh, there's going to be a problem having a casual Christian conversation, primarily because I don't see that person as God does. I see that person through my own lenses, with my own limitations, with my own issues, with my own drama that really has nothing to do with them. And so I pray that you're kind of gathering and gleaning what's going on. Uh, Jesus knows that people matter. And I hope you heard what was said there. It's not that Jesus just cares that people matter. What's significant in that statement is it doesn't say that Jesus says people that are rich, people that are nice, people that have not done anything to me, people that I consider a friend people that are Christian, people that uh, embrace my worldview or my value system. No, it's people that are criminals. It's people that are racist. It's people that abort children. It's people that are homosexual. It's people that are whatever these things in our social climate that for whatever reason, people want to uh, push to a side or judge or come and take some critical position because of something I've seen them or heard about them doing. Man, that's not God. And so when we come from a place like that, isn't it difficult to have a casual Christian conversation? And so prayerfully, uh, all of us that are professing to be Christians would also, in fact, be people that are infected with Christianity and not infected with all of the things that are going on in this world politically and socially and how we attach our kite to those things and we're riding the wave and treating people as such, but still trying to hold on to the banner of Christianity because what we end up is we really don't care about people we care about some people. We care about people under certain circumstances and certain situations. And that makes it difficult to have a casual Christian conversation. So what do you say to a person that is stressed out, frustrated, all messed up over all of these issues? Well, what you say to them is how you get through it. Because if you're really infected by your Christianity, then God has given you grace. God has given you mercy. God has given you tolerance. God has given you peace. God has given you joy. And all of those things are still going on. And so when you have a casual Christian conversation, you don't have to solve all the world's issues. You just simply say, this is what God has given me. Now, if you're here and you're viewing this and you say, yeah, but God hasn't given me that peace. God hasn't given me that grace. God hasn't given me that comfort in the midst of this. And that's the prayer you need to pray. Those are the scriptures you need to pursue and walk and be in God's presence 
so that you're also infected by your Christianity, which will then move how you are effected and affected. Well, prayerfully this time in casual Christian conversation has served you well. Uh, looking forward to what we're going to bring to you next. Uh, the next time you hear from us prayerfully, uh, we will be uh, in Egypt as our church is going on a trip to Egypt as well as Petra and then Israel. And I want to get your footage from those areas. We'll see how that unfolds. Uh, but literally, we will have living water for a thirsty Thursday goes to Egypt, Petra, and Israel. Well, continue to make God proud in all you say, think, and do.